Hiya, I'm Charlotte Jones. Um, I'm the head of creative arts at Newminster and Chantry Middle Schools. Um, I'm just going to be talking about Newminster Middle School uh, today. I have been um, an arts award advisor, I think it's probably about 10 years now. Um, I started off um, doing bronze and silver. And then um, more recently, I've done um, Discover, obviously trained in Discover and Explore, but only delivered um, personally uh, the Discover. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about what we do, what we've developed at Newminster, things that you might might feel like might, might be handy for you. So I've just had to learn how to share my screen. So bear with. I hope everyone can see that. Um, OK, so. Um, well, I'm going to focus on Discover Award today and what we do here at Newminster Middle School um, for our Discover Award. So I'm going to give you like a sort of overview of what we do here first and then I'll go into Discover. So the opportunities that we offer our school, we've got about 560 students at Newminster at the moment um, and they range from age nine up to 13. So we've got years five to years eight. And at the moment, we offer Discover Arts Award um, to all of our year five students. So that's 160 students in September. And they choose whether they would like to participate in this award. Um, we offer um, ex the Explore Arts Award to all of as an extracurricular act act activity to year six and seven, and then Bronze Arts Award. There are two sessions running at the moment. One is year with year eight. Uh, sorry, they're both with year eight. Uh, one is the visual art, and the other is a performance art. And we've got about sixty students doing that um, this year. So there's a lot of students in the school uh, taking. So we've probably got it, it's it was well, over a hundred students at the moment take an arts award. So um, how I kind of got involved in this um, was we, we delivered Discover Arts Award, uh, but it was another advisor who, who had been doing that. And um, we were approached by Culture Bridge Northeast and The Forge to collaborate during lockdown to produce a, um, a kind of template of ideas that would, um, and activities that children could add um, access from home um, so that they were able to keep their art, uh, you know, engaged with the arts and hopefully help mental health um, and to just give children a bit of a boost along with getting an award. Um, so I um, piloted it with my own children. Um, I've got three children um, and the older boys decided that they would like to help their mum out, which was very nice. Um, so we did this at home together. Um, so one of the children, one of my children at the time was six, going on seven, and the other one was nine. And here, I'm hoping that this is going to work. Uh, can everybody see this? This is kind of the pilot scheme that we came up with. Um, so You'll see some pictures of my children here. Um, the idea was that you could do this from home if children were locked down and at home, or um, a teacher could take it and run with it if they weren't, um, you know, if they, if they weren't a specialist art teacher or music teacher, and they weren't, you know, confident with the arts, they could take this and, and run with it and hopefully have enough ideas. So I'm hoping that this might help to other people and the, our children seemed to really engage with it um, when it was rolled then eventually rolled out to year five and obviously have continued that into year five this year too. So um, the children made spinners and then they went around the local communities looking for, for different pieces of art, whether it was graffiti, whether it was statues, whether it was uh, pieces of art that they could even find in the house. Um, you know, textiles, uh, examples of architecture on buildings. Um, you know, there was so much actually, I was really surprised actually how much was out there. Um, we made a spinner for music. And so they were able to spin the music round and recognize instruments and various um, sounds that were going on in TV programs or if we were listening to the radio what was what style was it that was playing what instruments were playing that song and we also developed a spinner for um, 
for dance. So they were watching Strictly Come Dancing or something on television like Bop Kids or whatever it was. And they could actually work out what moves they might be um, using and, and what um, genre they might be dancing to. Um, and there's access to the spinners here. So there's some of the spinner examples. Um, and then they just took part in a range of activities and these were mainly from home. So there's, we've got Minecraft here. There's my son playing his violin. Um, obviously they can use things that they already are doing. Um, and then um, this was incredibly fun. They loved the draw with Rob and draw with Rob. They can actually take part in a workshop online with Rob. Um, there's some manga ideas, graffiti ideas, the Tate um, gallery. And then I loved, I think it was Rachel said that she did art and nature uh, before. So um, we did lots of art with nature. So this was an ice sculpture. So they got some leaves from outside and various bits and bobs and filled it. And then we put it in the freezer and then we hung it on trees and saw the light coming through. And, and they really, really enjoyed this. That was good for any age. Charlie McKinsey. So they looked at various art artists. They even did digital art. So yes, I mentioned Minecraft before. And I think this kind of brings me on to where we are now at school, um, using anything that you can as evidence, like they're taking part in art pretty much all the time. They just don't realise it. So obviously this was World Book Day. They were dressing up. They were looking at costumes. A lot, many had their face painted. That's obviously art. Um, we're, we're just about to have a... Um, we're, we're looking at having an um, artist in for comic relief. She's coming, she can't come in, she's got COVID, bless her. She's coming in in, in two weeks um, and she's doing a digital art with all the, uh, the children, um, digital and um, actual physical art workshop with them, creating props like photo booth props and then they get to take photographs themselves. So I was saying to the children that they could reference all of this um, the things that were going on in school could all be referenced. I'm going to come back to my original presentation because I think I might have gone over bits there. But that gives you an idea. Um, here, there's, an, there's a, um, a portfolio, examples of portfolios. So you can see the children like practicing their dancing. So it might be stuff that they're already doing. Um, and this was going around Morpeth looking at statues and then this the inspiration. So they're obviously various inspirations. And there's a um I think we're gonna share share this presentation and you can see a portfolio there that one of the children has done um a full kind of art section of her portfolio. Um, so this year for all of our year five students, um, as part of our work within with Arts Award and as an Arts Mark School, um, all year five students, so all the children who are doing their Discover Arts Award, um, are, have been invited to take part in this Arts Bites project. Now we've never done this before at Newminster, but it looks really exciting and so far the children have really loved it. So each child in year five has been able to create their own piece of art, whether they've done it at school, whether they've done a piece of art at home and they chose which specific piece they wanted to enter. And it was entered to me and we chose 30 pieces to then be exhibited in a virtual art gallery online. Um, so then obviously we're able to view that it's coming um, online in, in March. Um, and, you know, it celebrates that creativity um, through a virtual medium um, and their families can enjoy it at home too. You don't actually have to physically go somewhere um, along with, you know, expressing their thoughts and their feelings and having a really positive impact on their mental health, which is obviously something we're really trying to build up at the moment, especially due to the pandemic. So they're going to use this evidence. This was some of the beautiful art that they created. And as you can see, I mean, it was just spectacular. Honestly, I couldn't believe some of the amazing art that came in. Um, so we had um, sort of sculptures, um, uh, various different mediums here. Uh, there was uh, melted wax um, on canvas. And there was pieces that uh, pupils had created for Black Lives Matter. Um, and then um, for Mental Health Week as well. 
celebrate that. So there's lovely people. Um, so for other evidence for their discover portfolios, um, we use things that children have done in school. So I was, I think I diverged slightly um, and talked about the uh, comic relief. So that's happening with comic relief. That's for everybody in the school. So year five will obviously take part in that. Um, you can see pictures here of um, our child project for children in need. Each child in the school brought in an item uh, from home. And our challenge was to create like an art attack style um, uh, blush and pudsy head. Um, so they were all told to bring a certain coloured item. And uh, I can't believe it actually worked, but we managed to, <laughs> managed to produce pudsy and blush, uh, make like a giant collage, which we then filmed uh, with, with the help of, help of some students um, who took the lead to, to film with a drone. So all children were involved in this. Um, likewise, all children in the school have been involved in the scientisting event where they learned to um, learn Makaton, a, a song in Makaton, and they were able to sing and sign that um, in February and we raised money for Sign Health through that event. So that's something they've been able to do. So they're gonna reference all of those in their portfolios. We also have, had many opportunities for performances so whether the children have been in choir or um whether they uh, these children actually weren't in a choir they they, they or that was all of year five took part in a outdoor little carol service um and then we've got remembrance day where children had a off timetable day to do remembrance activities which involved art as well so all of these things they can add in Ooh. Um, on the screen that I've just gone past there, uh, competitions. So we've been able to be involved in lots of competitions here at Newminster. So that was a, a pumpkin decorating competition for Halloween. And we were we did a, a bauble design um, for Northumbria Police, um, Christmas card designs for Hello Education. That was a songwriting competition for children in need, sorry. And um, more recently, all children have written a song which will be added to their portfolio for the Young Songwriters Competition. And that's been done within their music lessons. So there's loads of opportunities to kind of like collaborate with lessons and things they've done in school, as well as things that they're doing outside for their portfolios. Um, Many of them are involved in the extracurricular things that we offer here as well. So um, we've got a Kaylee band, a jazz band, a percussion band, which are all um, led by um, Music Partnership North. So big up to Fiona there. Um, they're all, we have fabulous, fabulous teachers um, who, who take those. And then at the moment we're doing the Lion King musical across the two middle schools. We've got 200 students involved in that. There's dance um, clubs and obviously instrumental lessons, which is through Music Partnership North. And all of those can be added to their portfolios, evidence of them taking part. Um, yeah, so the, so the bronze, we also run bronze art, um, arts awards, and these were some beautiful pictures taken by um, Arts Award the other day. Um, so we got awarded a Trinity um, champion. We got awarded a Trinity champion school last year. And as part of our role, um, they came in and took photographs of our children. So as you can see, you know, they, they were face painting and doing their portfolios. This is They were painting scenery for the backdrop. So it's basically, I think the way we use the arts awards is just any chance that the children can have in, in being involved in the arts and, and, and making them realise that they can use that as evidence for their portfolios, um, that's that's kind of how we've done it as a school. Uh, yeah, so we, we've achieved a platinum, arts mark platinum twice in the past few years um, and we're in the process of re reapplying and we hope to achieve that platinum again. Um, Music Mark have also helped us on our journey with um, their support with various training sessions. Um, and we got awarded that and obviously Tr Trinity Champion School. And I think that um, Jane was gonna help me share this film about um, 
the the arts award that they made at our school yeah is that okay so we made like we we made this uh, film with culture bridge northeast and the customs house and i know that uh, fiona was involved in this and jane and um and i was just saying to jane that I, that i feel like this is so so we've had met various things made at new Minster, but this one specifically shows the children it's it's a real true true representation of what goes on here so thank you for that Here we offer our pupils the chance to take part in the Arts Awards. For Year 8 and the Bronze Arts Award this year, we have combined our Visual and Performance Arts Awards with a project to do with The Lion King. After school on a Monday I do The Lion King musical with the choir. So right now we're doing auditions, um, so you've just, you've just auditioned for any of the main parts. So you can you get to sing in it, you also get to dance. I watched the show in theatre and I thought it was really inspiring how they did it and I would love to recreate it. Every Friday I do steel pans lessons in Newminster, which is really fun and we're learning Caribbean music. So another thing that I do is dancing at CDA, Claire's Dance Academy in Morpeth. Um, you can do many classes. I do street dance and musical theatre. So in street dance, we're right now we're doing a jazz dance, which also goes into um, a street dance. In Arts Award, we have been doing art inspiration, where we have been designing Japanese buildings. We've been learning facts about our artists and what they've done. Uh, we looked at art in the local community around Morpeth and we went to different places. Through the Brands Arts Ward, they get to work with different artists, they look at different careers and it gives them ideas and aspirations for the future. And we use our local art galleries really well. Uh, we've got the Baltic, the Biscuit Factory, the Lane Art Gallery and every year we go and visit uh, one of those different locations. At the moment we're doing a dance I'm going to talk about a festival I went to. It was a music festival in Morpeth. We've been doing like a lot of songs to cover. Like Blinding Lights and Cake by the Ocean. <laughs> it's actually really exciting to learn about new instruments and stuff because I've never done that before. It's so much fun and it helps me to think about music and what goes on in it and acting and it's just really amazing in general. We look forward every week to coming to Arts Award every Friday. We find it very enjoyable and looking forward to just having a nice time. I've really enjoyed doing Arts Award and I feel it's improved my confidence level a lot. It's been really fun and it's definitely been able to make me be interested in music a bit more. The Arts Award is incredibly beneficial to our children. It boosts self-confidence, self-esteem, it encourages creativity and often our pupils go on to study further arts, GCSE, A-level and sometimes even to university. Thank you, Charlotte. Uh, back over to you. Back over to me. Yeah, I was just thinking that back over to me. Yeah. Yeah. No, I was just thinking there as, as I was having a little bit of time to reflect that when I'm going to go back to this, I think I haven't said everything I wanted to about the um the other ideas. Um so if you go to this section here with the template there are other ideas so I think I only went to the to the end of the art bit but obviously it covers art music drama dance um so there were other ideas for students to have a look at so this is was collaborative working with um music partnership north where um they've got pieces of music that if student is learning a um if a student is, can everybody see do, that? Do you want to reshare? Do I need to reshare the screen? Reshare screen. Sorry, yeah. there we are. So we've got, this is on the template that I was showing before. 
can everybody see this now yeah um so if if students were musicians and wanted to have a go if they played an instrument they could have a little go at playing with um, many um as music here and back and tracks um fairly simple and then more more tricky ones to various instruments um and this is just and there's some dance classes that students could have a have a little go at um some even some ball bouncing choreography so my son is um massively into football my youngest son and he really enjoyed that so it was choreography bouncing a ball um so that's there um and then there was some links to researching artists and I also did a um a little crib sheet for the children which I think um was similar very similar to the one that arts award have done um and then we were able to share their work online so they shared it they shared it with people at home but then we shared via twitter and our websites um and our facebook pages and at the bottom here is an example of my oldest son's portfolio so we just basically took any opportunity so it's St. Patrick's Day today and children yesterday did some art, do a St. Patrick's Day and um, we just took any opportunity to look into artists and, um, you know, using snow sculptures with snow, um, twigs, sticks, um, bits from nature, nature heads, they loved these. Um, and it was literally framing and photography. Um, so this was a lady with a dress so there were just lots of ideas pancakes pancake day um that was my rabbit and my son did a nice little portrait of him um they wrote some limericks and you know world book day like i've said before so it, it was just anything that we could do to engage with the arts to give them a different um you know something to do um to, to help the mental health um and and really and get, like encourage their creativity so you've got there's access to that yeah i, I hope that's been helpful for people that's wonderful. So yeah, that kind of gives a bit of an overview of what we do here at newminster hello again everybody i've just had something pop up on my screen so i'm just um Just going to get rid of it's in oh there we go i don't know what that was um i'm just going to share my powerpoint bear with me a minute i think the danger of our, um of going second or third on a presentation is obviously there might be a little bit of uh repetition because uh you know when when something's worth doing you you do sometimes find that um different organizations are are doing the same thing so there may be a little bit of crossover but hopefully um we'll be able to work with that so uh, we're going to look at um this afternoon at at toward discover and how we use that during uh lockdown to still engage with families while they were at home homeschooling So who are we? Basically, um, we're an NPO consortium of five local authority museums, and we have seven venues um, based in Stockton, Middlesbrough, Redcar, Darlington and Hartlepool, all of which prior to lockdown were delivering um, Arts Award, mainly Discover, some Explores, um, mainly with school groups. However, just before we went into lockdown, in summer 2019 um we did develop like an arts award booklet that we want that we thought was more appropriate for our settings and we used that with uh in discovering a day with 60 brownies that visited our museum and we found by sort of using that and piloting it that it was it, it was quite a good booklet it worked for us uh then when we went into lockdown in the march we revisited that that booklet and thought right how can we use this with families how can we try and 
engage with them families, give them some opportunities for creativity, um, using sort of our our venues, our um, collections, just letting them know that we're, we're still there really. So uh, we went back to the designer and we, we got a few tweaks on that booklet. Um, and we, we had to think about how it was going to be accessed because we were aware of, you know, different constraints and things. So some of the access problems, we thought, right, not all families have printers at home. Um, so let's go back to the designer and see if we can get this as like an editable um, document um, that we could sort of promote on our promote and for them to be able to send it back through sort of emails that they could, you know, use some technology to add photographs to it and that type of thing if if they were able to do that. Um, so we were able to upload that onto our website so that it was a, a resource for them to be able to use. Uh, access Accessibility, obviously, we were aware that not all families, you know, were able to access that um, online. Uh, so we did sort of look at other ways to be able to do that, which I'll touch on in a second. Um, we wanted to make it as easy as possible for them to sort of understand, because obviously we, when we're delivering it large scale with schools and classes, um, we, we know what the different parts are. We come sort of overly familiar with them sometimes. So we needed to really break that down for people that hadn't gone through any training, we're, we're literally going to be reading the instructions and make it as simple as possible. So we looked at different resources that we could create um, and we put them into like a drop down section on our website, which are, are still there for everybody to, check, um, to have a look at if they want to. Um, and I'll put the, the address link in, in the chat in a little bit. Uh, so we looked at like answering questions that we thought the families might ask you know if they were going to start this like how long is it going to take like what am I going to need because shops were shut so how how you know if I haven't got any materials what can I use that type of thing um, and then going through the parts and breaking them down uh, we also uh, created little videos which was all quite new to us really um, obviously if, if we'd wanted videos and things like that doing in the venues before we used to get filmmakers in to do that so it was you know literally us at home um, recording sort of step-by-step -step instructions and things like that to be able to do um, and we wanted to link it to our collections we thought that was really important um, wanted people to know you know how they could look at the arts through the venues that we had so we looked at some of the objects in our collections and we thought about um activities that could go with that so very similar to what charlotte was saying about like the the nature and the printing um and then there was an activity on leaves we had a lovely um which we've put on the website a lovely vase i think that has sort of embossed leaf design on so we showed that and then we linked the activity to that which was all easy to find on the website um again just i think i've just touched on that yet the resources are linked to the the tees valley museum collections however it was just inspiration they could you know find other things that they could do so that was the arts in our collection um resource so uh, another element was Saxon jewellery. So we showed them some of the decorative art and the, the jewellery in our collection. And then we um, put a little film together about what they could create and design their own jewellery. Step by step, a little YouTube video. We also looked at local art and artists as well, because we wanted them to, to link that to their local areas. So we again we had limited access at the time to what we could get hold out of on our own sites really because we weren't allowed in the venues to take photographs and things so it was things that we already had like digitalized that we were able to put on there but we were able to pull that together and then how did we promote it so again you know it wasn't easy to sort of be it our local links of going out to communities or sending leaflets out and that type of thing just wasn't going to work so it was how how were we going to actually get the message across to people that we had this resource that they could tap into and it was an activity they could do together as a family um so we obviously used our music in facebook pages which was great for families that already um 
were sort of members and followed that but there was other families that may not have visited our museums or followed our Facebook pages uh, we linked through um, to parents via school platforms as well so obviously this, the school started to send homework out and their day-to-day -day activities um, on different sort of platforms so we approached some schools um, we initially sort of looked at the colleagues across the Tees Valley Museums and you know asked them to sort of approach their schools um, and we got some really good responses from them um, encouraging the families who had completed it to share it as well so if we were getting um, emails back with the, the completed portfolios we were asking them you know can you tell any friends can you can you, you know share the resource with with other children that you you might think might be interested in it um, and linking another other national initiatives like Children's Art Week, obviously we supported through Culture Bridge. Um, we're also a member of Family Explorers, so they were able to advertise it for us and on the Family Art Standards site. I think the main, um, the one that I think worked the best and that we've been able to take forward was linking with the schools and using them as sort of portals to be able to um, link in with the families and some of them decided to do it with the key worker children as well um, in school. Obviously the, the certificates, you know, there's a little bit of a delay in that and we wanted to make sure that something was sort of sent out to the children straight away. So um, we, we just got an interim certificate sort of created just to say that, you, you know, you've, you've completed it, we're awaiting your certificate and, um, and we'll send that out in the post in due course which which we did um and we were able to sort of contact them regarding further initiatives with, where consent was given as well so that was really good to be able to sort of engage with them families over a longer period um oh sorry i haven't updated this because it was something so at, at the time when um when i first put this part of this presentation together we'd had 44 online line submissions over over the couple of month period which um you know was just independent sort of families coming to us um it was nominated for kids and museum digital resource award we got loads of positive feedback from, from families like through emails and things um we had one young person that went on to actually complete the arts award explore and that was something that was new to me i'd never delivered that before so um, we actually did that over Zoom sessions because, again, we, we were in lockdown at the time. Um, so I had Zoom sessions with her and her parent um, over over several months. And she sort of produced the work in between that, which was just brilliant. Um, several museums actually adapted our portfolio of work, um, our work booklet as well. So um, I presented at an action learning set and we had Bears and Stoke and Maidstone actually contacted me to ask if they could use our booklet with with their families. This is just some of the feedback that that we got from some of the families. I think it just came through that you know that chance for them to sort of do something as a family to you know to, to have pride in the the creative work that they were doing and to obviously get the certificate at the end of it um over quite challenging times was was really nice um we've added we've obviously once things calmed down a little bit and we had a little bit of time to sort of reflect on what what had been quite a rushed process initially we thought right we, we've got something here that's worked quite nice and for me it was a complete shift um with arts award because previously when we'd all delivered it across the venues we we were doing it with classes of 30 or 40 um sometimes two classes in a year group and when you were moderating them that the, they were all very similar it was they were given the same artist they created the same piece of work and even though looking at them individually they had completed the parts and the evidence was there for them to get the certificate it started to sort of be very samey and think what what difference is this actually making to them individuals um are they understanding that you know a lot of the other things that they they do as part of their day-to-day -day activities 
could have been evidence um, and the difference between the school um, booklets that we were getting back prior to COVID and the individual ones from, from children that were participating during lockdown was massive. Um, and I just think that impact was, was very different with them children. Um, and that's where it was just brilliant listening to Charlotte earlier, uh, coming from sort of a school point of view of being able to look at different elements rather than it just being art towards done in art class, like during an art class um, and actually getting the children to, to think about what they do um, with regards sort of out of school activities or um, music sessions and performance art and things like that. I've, I've gone on to um, develop and we're, we're still in the process of this because we're, we're wanting to add things to it all the time, an art towards homework package. Um, the first one that we did was how does the how does the arts make us feel? So again, using the school as a portal really to be able to to get the arts award out to the families, but trying to get the schools to um, step back a little bit really because I I mean this I, I don't think we're on our own with this experience of the class arts packs being very very similar. Um, asking the teachers to send parts of it home, getting them to, you know, work on it with um, their adults or talk about, you know, how, how does sort of, when you go to a dance class or when you watch a film that you really like, how, how do you feel about that? What, you know, what, do you come away feeling really happy about it? When you look at, um, when you listen to a, your favorite artist or a particular song, sort of do you sometimes get a little bit upset does it remind you of something so we were trying to sort of tap in uh, to well-being um when the schools were first going back to try and get them to sort of talk about some of the emotions there as well um but also to use the arts in a much more sort of creative way rather than um it being sort of this is an artist and this is you know the only art form that that we're going to talk about today. Um, one of the one of the teachers that I've been working quite closely with that piloted the homework package, but I still felt at the time that it was very dictated. Um, again, when they came back, I was a little bit disappointed that most of the class had concentrated on the same artist. Um, I've been out since and had had a really like sort of detailed discussion with her now that we can do face to face. And she said, I felt that the one of the, the big issues was that the teachers were worried that there was going to be pupils that wouldn't achieve it by sending it as, as a home as a homework. So by doing it in class, they had a bit more control over it being completed. Um, so when we had a chat about it not just being something that was done in art, that it could be for performance art or it could be them participating in a music session. It could be some dance that was, was in a PE session. Um, there seemed to be a bit of a light bulb moment. Um, and I just said, we can then look at them, that evidence that's been gathered over them months. And you know, if they missed out on the art class, it doesn't matter because there'll be something else that they've participated in um, that can go towards their evidence. Um, and it'll be a bit more individual to them if, they do do an extra artist, maybe, yeah, do it with everybody in school, but then ask them to go and choose somebody that sort of interests them. And, and that doesn't have to be a painter. It, you know, it can be a musician, it can be an actor, an actress, something like that as well. Um, so just getting them to sort of back to embed a little bit more, really. Um, and I, I just feel quite strongly about that now that I'm sort of more disappointed if we if we get a class pack that's sort of very very similar and when you're moderating 30 or you're assessing sorry for just if you're just assessing the 30 and completing the form and you just feel like it's very samey I just get a little bit disappointed about it because I just think that there's probably so much more creativity that that children that child's been involved with um so we're going on to sort of look at different arts award homework packages. So um, we're in the process of looking one at, at nature and linking it to our collection. So again, looking at objects and paintings, um, 
that are inspired by nature and then creating activities that the children could have a go at um, and link into. Um, and one of the things that we, we'd like to do with that is actually commission some local artists as well to do videos that um, again can sort of link to to the collection but be inspiration for the, the children to be able to create their own artwork. And that's the end. <laughs>